Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to my February book haul. I only have one book, so I haven't set up the tripod and whatnot, so you'll just have to bear with me for some shaky cam. I can also put you down here, look. So this was sent to me by Elliot and Thompson. We have a press release here. Okay, The Pull of the River, A Journey into the Wild and Watery Heart of Britain. Uh, so, uh, let me see, look, I'll show you it. Tales of escape and adventure on Britain's waterways. In the pull of the river, two foolhardy explorers do what we would all love to do. They turn their world upside down and seek adventure on their very own doorstep. In a handsome homemade canoe, painted a joyous nautical red the colour of Mae West's lips, Matt and his friend James delve into a watery landscape that invites us to see the world through new eyes. So um, I was offered a copy of this for review and funnily enough I'd just been talking to Hannah Tay about uh, a book by Sarah Henshaw called The Bookshop That Floated Away and Hannah had read another book recently that was sort of about uh, set on a houseboat as well so I think she's getting a copy of it too and um, yeah I'm really looking forward to reading this I'll probably read this early February Alright another quick update with some books that I've got for you guys well I've got for me I guess as opposed but I've got to, I've got them to share with you guys so here I have The Fade Out by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips so I will read you the blurb of this it's a graphic novel uh, Hollywood 1948, a noir film stuck in endless reshoots, a writer played by nightmares from the war, an up-and-coming starlet's suspicious death, and a mogul and his security chief who will do anything to keep the cameras rolling before the studio system comes crashing down. So I'm actually currently reading this at the time of filming as well. So this was given to me uh, as uh, like a book exchange, well like a comic book swap. Uh, I actually went on a date with someone and we swapped comic books. So she wrote on this little postcard to say, Dane, just a little note to tell you the reasons why I chose this comic book. The main protagonist is a writer. It's set in the golden era of Hollywood. It has a murder mystery at the heart of the story. I love the drawing style and thought it was a great front cover. So there we go. Uh, the fade out. And so far it is very good as well. Uh, and then I have uh, from Amazon Prime, no less. So I do have Amazon Prime, but I don't often buy books from Amazon. So, I'm not sure what I ordered. Film It Cuts, Sunshine and Lollipops, Volume 1. And these are short stories by Ollie Jacobs. You probably remember Ollie Jacobs from um, some of my indie read-along videos and previous hauls and whatnot. I'm supposed, in fact, I was supposed to be going to see him today. Oops. Um, I'm supposed to be doing an interview with him at some point for the channel as well. He's an indie writer from here in High Wycombe and this is a short story collection. So yay. Hello! Uh, post. I got some posts today. I still have a cold as well, excuse me. Okay, so here we have Sean the Blue Fox. So Sean is an Icelandic author and so that's presumably why this is uh, blurbed by Bjork as well. And uh, I've just heard a lot of good stuff about Sean so I wanted to, uh, to read some. Sean is a celebrated Icelandic poet and novelist. His novels have been translated into 25 languages and include From the Mouth of the Whale and The Whispering Muse. So there we go. Yeah, he's written, lyrics, he's written lyrics for Bjork as well, so that's pretty cool. Then we have Terry Pratchett, A Blink of the Screen, Collected Shorter Fiction. I wasn't expecting this to be hardcover, actually, but um, I am excited to read this. Even though this, it's possible that I've read some of these, because they might have been in, um, in, that, in that book that I read recently, uh, Dragons at Crumbling Castle. No, but this is quite cool, because there's some... Um, yeah, there's a, like a deleted... Ex oh. I don't know what happened there, I went totally out of focus. But anyway, this is pretty cool. There's some, uh, some uh, Discworld fiction that's not been published elsewhere. Some deleted stuff. So, uh, yeah, excited to check that out. And then finally, here we have Agatha Christie, Crooked House. A mystery with a twist at every turn. Well, she says she thinks it's one of her best as well, so that's interesting. And uh, it's quite a thin book, but uh, yeah, look, look forward to it. I back to uh, the grind. Hello, uh, little addendum to my haul. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning, by the way, which is why I'm trying to be relatively quiet. I got a couple of new books in the post and um, I didn't film myself opening them because my friend was over and I just wanted to see what they were. So I got Doom 94 by Janice Jonebs and this is a Latvian novel translated into English. And um, basically, so if you consider the time period it was in, in uh, so it's set in 1994 and that was five years after, no, it was, four years after 
no, three years after Latvia regained its independence from the Soviet Union. And um, basically Janis Jonevs was, I think, sort of 17 at the time. And this is literally a novel about him and his friends sort of driving around Latvia, age 17, listening to doom metal, which sounds cool. And then I got uh, The Station 17 Chronicles, written by Ollie Jacobs. And Ollie is a Wickham author, uh, an indie author as well. And I'm just trying to get through them all. So uh, pick that up as well. Yes. Did you get any books in the post, Biggie? Did you get any books? No. Okay. All right, in case you're wondering why I look like this with my hair like this, it is because I have a big old spot on my face and I'm trying to hide it. And I'm doing fairly well, I would say, actually. But uh, let's have a look at this post. What do we got? Only one thing today, I think. And uh, I know what this is. So... This is Chu, the Omnivore Edition, Volume 1, by Rob Guillory and John Lehman. Uh, big shout out to Cats and Camera, who is a big Chu fan. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's a graphic novel series basically about a detective who he gets like psychic impressions from uh, biting into things. So he can bite a dead body and get an idea of who killed them. Uh, the re I've already read this, but I gave a copy to uh, a lady I have been seeing. God, this is awkward. <laughs> We did a comic exchange, so I gave her Chew and uh, she gave me um, the, the fade out, which I talked about in my last wrap up. So yeah, all right. Hello, uh, so I went to Oxford and got a lot of books, so I'm gonna haul some for you. I'll start with this one actually though, which I ordered online. And, uh, oh. and this is quite a rare one as well. In fact, it's so rare that there is a sort of protective thing. Yeah, so this is the dust jacket here, look, uh, in plastic, and then I'll take that off. And it is Tulipomania, a King Penguin book by, uh, I can't remember who it's by, let me check, by Wilfred Blunt, with 16 plates from 17th century watercolours by Alexander Marshall. And um, yeah, this is a King Penguin. I believe it's about um, when there was like a tulip shortage. So um, yeah. And it just looks really cool, so I thought thought I'd grab a copy. And this is also a first edition as well, so that is very cool. I might even be um, super cheeky, because I think this is worth more than I paid for it as well. So I'm tempted to sell it and then buy another one, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Sergio Popovich and Matthew Miller, Blueprint for Revolution: How to Use Rice Pudding, Lego Men, and Other Nonviolent Techniques to galvanize communities, overthrow dictators, or simply change the world. Uh, then I went charity shopping, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on each of these books because i got loads, but uh, i got here John Wyndham, Day of, The Day of the Triffids, which obviously is a classic which I haven't got to yet as well. Cressida Cowell, How to Steal a Dragon's Sword, so I'm just trying to work my way through all of Cressida Cowell's books because I, I, they're uh, a guilty pleasure of mine. Gangster Rap by Benjamin Zephaniah. So uh, Zephaniah, I'm working my way through all of his books. Philip Pullman, The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel uh, Christ, which uh, uh, Philip Pullman is another author I'm trying to work my way through. And they actually had two copies of this. So this has got a CD inside for a Peruvian. It's like a, <laughs> someone's obviously used that as a bookmark. How very strange. Uh, so more Crest of the Cowl books. Here is How to Train Your Dragon, The Day of the Dreader and How to Train Your Viking by Toothless the Dragon. Very cool. Uh, I got this, which is a penguin uh, book. So this is Julius Caesar and Roman Britain. So these were very popular kind of years and years ago. I'm not necessarily collecting them, but I do like them. So I pick them up if I can. Uh, Dashiell Hammett, The Dane Curse. So I got this because for a start, it's got my name in it, but also um, Dashi Oham, I've wanted to read some more of his stuff. I've read, I think, one of his books or maybe some short stories or something and really liked him. He writes kind of hard-boiled detective fiction. Uh, Isaac Asimov, The Robots of Dawn. So Asimov's another author I'm trying to go through and I just saw this one I thought it was nice and thick as well. Uh, what else we got? Asimov, uh, Space Ranger, which is the first Space Ranger novel. That's with David Starr, who is, I believe, Lucky Starr. Yeah, so the fifth one is The Moons of Saturn, which I have actually read. No, the sixth one, sorry, The Rings of Saturn. Here we have Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, a play. I did not know that there was a play of uh, this book, but, I mean, I'm a Dahl fan, so I had to, had to get it when I saw it. Here we have Douglas Adams and John Lloyd, The Deeper Meaning of Lyft. 
Uh, Douglas Adams, another author I'm trying to get through, and also John Lloyd uh, is uh, he's the co-creator of QI, and he does various other stuff. I've read some other books he's been involved in. Here we have Unspun Socks from a Children's Laundry by Spike Milligan, a puffin book. Uh, Haruki Murakami, Hard Boiled Wonderland and The End of the World, another author who I'm just trying to collect all of their books. Uh, Sean from the Mouth of the Whale, so I've picked up another book by Sean. Uh, she's uh, he, sorry. He is an Icelandic author and uh, also uh, writes write, writes for Bjork, and so uh, I just yeah, I'm kind of fascinated. I want to see what he's got. And then here we have Manga Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet, illustrated by Sonia Long. I mean, how cool is that? It's literally Manga Shakespeare. So anyway. That is it for now. I will see you soon. So I was at a friend's house the other day and we watched Matilda and she was saying it's like her, one of her favourite movies and one of her favourite books. She's actually got a first edition of it. So I bought her this. Where am I now? True stories of girlhood and accidental fame by Mara Wilson who was Matilda. And uh, yeah. And if I, I've heard it's really good but I think I'll let her read it as well. And um, if she says it's good I might get it myself. I don't know. Do you think I should get it myself? Let me know. I went a bit mental in the charity shops this weekend and bought loads of books. So I'm going to tell you about them. Um, we'll start actually with this one where, because basically I was outside smoking a cigarette and um, a lady walked past and saw me reading and just started talking to me. And she basically insisted that I took this, which is the great controver which is the great controversy of the great Protestant Reformation uh, by E.G. White. And it's a religious book, you know, and about how it's the end times, I believe, she said. Um, I'm not going to read this. I just thought I'd show it to you. I'm going to donate this immediately to charity. But, you know, thank you, random strange lady who, who saw me reading... What was I reading? I was reading Asimov. Yeah. Okay, and then here we have Words as Weapons by AJ, Doug Lucy, Lucy Jacobs, Mary Bell, Peter Cox MBE, Rowan Padmore and Tom Kuhn. So um, this is like a poetry collection and um, I was given this copy. Basically, um, I, kn I knew somebody that had, uh, that, had, that had read this and that had got a copy and I mentioned it looked really cool and so they gave it to me. So I'm very happy about that. Lots of poetry in here. Cool. And it's a proper little chat book as well. Look, that's why it's been tied together. Then we have E.T. The Extraterrestrial by William Cotswinkle. So this is uh, obviously a novel based on the screenplay by Melissa Matheson. Wow, I didn't know um, E.T. was written by a woman. That's pretty cool. Like, back in the 80s and whatnot, I wouldn't have thought you'd... Uh, I would have thought it would be more male-dominated up at the, uh, the, uh, the screenplays and whatnot. So yeah, I'm going to read that. I've got here John Boyne, The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. Just heard it's really good. Uh, it's probably gonna make me cry, isn't it? But whatever. And then about the Holocaust, I don't really know. I just all I just know about that is that it's it's kind of hyped by people. Uh, Strange Weather by Joe Hill, which I just picked up because it's a Joe Hill book that I didn't have. Um, From splinters of deadly rain to a cloud that is more solid than it should be, these tales demonstrate Joe Hill's remarkable ability to show you what hides beneath our reality. Okay, here we have Scott Lynch, The Lies of Loch Lamora. So this is the first one. Is it The uh, Gentleman Bastards? Yeah, The Den Gentleman Bastards. Uh, I know a lot of people on BookTube really love this book. And I mean, I kind of, I like fantasy. So, and actually I'd heard of this before BookTube. I actually thought it was older than it was, I think. First published in 2006. I would have thought it was like 30, 40 years old for some reason. Just based on the kind of vague context I've heard of it before. But yeah. Looking forward to this. Here we have When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. I believe this is, uh, isn't this about the guy um, who became a doctor? Yeah, he he was about to complete dec a decade's worth of training as a neurosurgeon, then was diagnosed with uh, inoperable lung cancer. And um, this would be good for one, for reading, just for some context for one of my clients, who is uh, Emmanuel Fombu, who is um, you know in the medical profession, and we talk about uh, healthcare and stuff together, so. All right, sorry about that. I had a little break, but I'm back now. We're going to go through the rest of these books. Uh, so we have got here we have Beloved by Toni Morrison. So I read her um, vintage mini modern edition um, in the box set that I read and really enjoyed it. I want to read more um, Toni Morrison, so I thought I'd, I'd pick this up. I have Hercule Poirot's Christmas, so this is just one of the Agatha Christie novels that I haven't read. I might even save it for next Christmas, as this Christmas I read The Christmas Pudding and Other Stories or whatever. 
The Food of the Gods by H.G. Wells. So I've read The War of the Worlds and The Time Machine and enjoyed them both. So I'd like to read a bit more H.G. Wells. And also this is just a really cool edition. One of those old, nice, nice old sci-fi books. Here we have Philip Pullman, Four Tales, illustrated by Peter Bailey. So it's got The Firework Maker's Daughter, which I've already read. And then I Was a Rat, Clockwork, and The Scarecrow and His Servant. Uh, with like a, a custom epilogue for it and stuff. And yeah, it's got these little images and it's really quite beautiful. Two pounds in a charity shop this was. The RRP is 17 pounds. Okay, then we have The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. So basically all I know is that this is set, uh, it's historical fiction set in Amsterdam, basically. Amsterdam is, you know, my favourite city in the world that I've visited so far anyway. And uh, I've just heard a lot of good things about it, so I thought I would, I would give, it a, uh, give it a go. Okay, then we have these two, that these were a pound each, and I thought they're probably worth more than that as well. So we have Death Note, the Black Edition, uh, Volume 1 and Volume 3, they didn't have Volume 2, by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata. And then, as it's anime, I guess you, uh, sorry, as it's, not hentai, the other thing, manga, I guess uh, you read from right to left, so very cool. Okay, then we have Holes by Louis Saka. Uh, again, it's just another book that I've heard lots of good things about. And I've been trying to figure out, this cover reminds me of some other book. And I can't remember which one it is. But, um, yeah, cool. Then finally, we have here, we have uh, 30 Days of Vegan by Catherine Kidd RD. So this is like a month worth of vegan recipes. I'm not going to follow the plan, but I am going to go through it and highlight which recipes I want to try and give them a go. We have Jaws by Peter Benchley. So it says, The Nightmare Returns, but I'm fairly sure... Like, this isn't like the story of Jaws 2 or like a second book or something, so I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think it's just because it's been republished or whatever. Then we have Ruth Ware, The Lion Game. Um, just, I have read Ruth Ware's, other, Ruth Ware's other books, so I thought I might as well pick this one up. Uh, here we have a very booktube book. This is uh, uh, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. So this is book one of the Mistborn series. Heard good stuff about this series, never picked it up, so I thought I'd finally, finally give it a go. And finally down here I have Bill Bryson, At Home, A Short History of Private Life. And again, he's just one of the authors who I'm trying to read uh, every book that they've written. So, uh, so yeah. Oh good, very exciting. Alright guys, one last book and that is The Lovely Bones by Alice Seabold. I actually got this with my charity shop uh, browse the other day and I'd forgotten about it. It was inside my rucksack and then I uh, was using my rucksack today and discovered this and I was like, oh yes, I forgot about that. So there we go, The Lovely Bones by Alice Seabold. But as it is now pretty much the end of the month and I'm not expecting anything uh, tomorrow, I am going to love you and leave you guys here. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. If you're interested in uh, buddy reading any of them, then let me know as well and we'll see what we can do. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.